So usually when Soi Chung and Gordon Lamb work together, we get awesome results, like the brilliant 2021 thriller Limbo. So this movie has a lot to live up to. Hi, I'm the Artie Dance from the Asian Film Fans and Artie Dance YouTube channel, and I welcome you to this review of the 2023 mystery thriller Mad Fate. Now let's check out what this movie's about. This movie is an interesting tale of a handful of intertwined characters. While hoping to stop the murder of his client, a fortune teller arrives at her apartment too late. Also at the apartment is a delivery boy who's experiencing a strange rush of excitement at the sight of a dead body. The killer has escaped to the delivery boy's parents' noodle shop, where he hides the tools he used to kill the woman, while a police detective who is determined to find the killer realizes that he has a long history with the delivery boy. Sensing that fate will not be kind to him, the fortune teller decides to help the delivery boy change his future, but it tests his fragile sanity. So, I'm worried that I didn't fully understand this film, which means that maybe I didn't enjoy it as much as I should have, but make no mistake, it's still a good film. So this movie seems to be tackling the stigma of both mental illness as well as the lack of rehabilitation of youth offenders. So it also seems to be having a commentary on the fortune-telling culture. And part of me is not sure if the movie's ridiculing it or if it's celebrating it. I'm also really on the fence with Gordon Land's performance in this movie. Part of it's really awesome and it's well done. And other times I feel like it just borderlines into the ridiculous. Like... There's a scene at the end where he's acting like he has a split personality. And it it just looks weird. Um, and it left me confused. Lockman Young, uh, as the delivery boy, he was really good though. He keeps up this whole um, menacing look all the way throughout the film. Um, but adjusts it accordingly in, sin in scenes where he needs to be, you know, a little bit quick thinking to get out of a scenario. So... He genuinely comes across as a psycho in this movie. Um, and the whole movie, look, the whole movie really is quite good. Let, let's not be, let's not lie about this. The movie's it's quite good. You don't really know where it's going to take you. Um, and so that makes it a good thriller to me. And on top of that, some of the secondary characters, like the police detective or the gambling addicted prostitute, um, they're great. And they add a lot to this movie. But... And I think you might know what I'm going to talk about if you've seen the movie. Visually, the movie falters. And really badly, too. So if you're one of those people who are sensitive to poor CGI, then this movie will have you reaching for the button to turn the movie off. Um, and if you're one of those people who thinks that Marvel movies have terrible CGI, then your benchmark is ridiculous. And this movie will not, this movie will not gel with you at all. The Cat in the movie looks truly awful. And if that's a deliberate design choice, then you have to wonder what the hell were they thinking about? Now, part of me wonders, is the cat real? And the other part of me wonders, yeah, the cat's real. Why does it look so terrible? But you know what? It's not just the cat. It's all the compositing shots too. At the start, in the torrential rain, when he's trying to help his first client out and you see the gravestones uh, up on the, on the hill, that looks horrible. And... Every shot that involves crazy weather, I think you know where I'm going with this. The weird part is, the visual effects are done by Lewis Ku's One Cool Pictures Productions, but clearly they had their D team on this. And another thing that left me absolutely baffled was the music choices. Now, there's frequent renditions of now public domain um, classical music in there and, and all done very differently at times um but the movie made me feel like sorry i should say the music in the movie made me feel like the movie didn't want me to take it seriously i i, I don't know how best to describe it but when i heard those musical tunes pop up i kept thinking is this movie trying to be a comedy it's clearly not so in the end i'm baffled what to do with this movie because it's not a bad movie um but it's just not awesome like Limbo was. So maybe three and a half stars because, hold, hear me out on this one. The plot's great. 
And the story's really enjoyable. For 140 odd minutes, it's a really captivating story. And the performances from virtually everyone are really rock solid. But it's less to, as it is let down by some of the worst CGI you've seen in a very, very long time. These weird music choices and this this element of turning into a comedy that, that just left me so confused. So if you've seen it, help me make sense of this, please. Tell me what I missed or what I got right. Um, or tell me your interpretation of this film. If you've seen it, uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Press like if you enjoyed this review. Um, definitely leave a comment if you've got something to say about the film to help me understand it a bit more. Otherwise, I'll catch you in our next movie review. We've got a couple big ones coming up this week, including The Meg 2. So hopefully we'll catch that in a couple days. We'll see you next time.